Hey everyone, I'm Andrew and I'm here in the letterpress department at Jukebox. And today we've got a super exciting day. We're going to be showing you a behind the scenes look at how we create a five color letterpress print project on a 40 point cotton paper stock. Letterpress is a one color process, so we're going to be showing you a step by step look at mixing our inks, mounting our plate, setting up our press, getting our registration and our impression just perfect and giving you just a total run through of how we do what we do. We're also gonna be taking a look at the Pantone matching system and talking a little bit more about that so you're not gonna to wanna to miss out. So stick around and enjoy the show. So I'm gonna start off by locking our aluminum base into the chase from our printing press. I'm using a collection of wood and lead furniture to fill the gaps. There's also a set of coins on the left side and the top side, and when they're tightened with a coin key, they create enough tension to hold everything in place. Next, we have the printing plate for our first color. This is a magnesium printing plate that we're going to mount to the base using the grid and the crop marks, and we're going to try to get this plate as straight as possible and in the perfect spot because the position of this plate is going to decide the position for the next four plates we run after this. It's always best to get the first plate positioned as accurately as possible. I've gone ahead and cut some paper down. This is our 40 point cotton paper stock and I'm placing it into the feeding table of our Heidelberg Platten letterpress. I'm going to have to move the side standard and sheet steadiers into place to help the sheets remain consistent while the press is running. Next, I'm going to place the chase into the press and I'm going to lock it in using the chase latch to make sure that this thing never falls out. That would be a disaster. And this is our tympan sheet. It's a calibrated, durable paper type that is specifically made for the printing industry. And we build up our make ready and do all of our packing underneath this specialty paper. We're also going to position our bottom guides to make sure that they fit the exact paper size we will be running. And we're going to set up our delivery table so that when each sheet is finished printing, they'll land neatly and tidily. Okay, so we're ready to mix some ink. So we're going to start off by looking at our Pantone swatch guide. The swatch guide is the most important tool we use for mixing and matching colors. It's the backbone for color accuracy across many industries but it applies best to printing because each swatch has a formula for how to make each color. I'm going to be mixing all five different Pantone colors using this guide. To do so, I'm going to follow the formula for the swatch and measure the base inks using a scale.
Today we're doing a small run of cards, so we don't need that much ink. This particular color is made up of a base of red, yellow, black, and opaque white. It's a light pastel pink color, so it's made up of about 97% opaque white. Once I've measured out the weights for each base color, it's time to mix them all together. We use a rubber-based ink, which is quite thick and can be hard to mix, but it's very important that the inks are mixed thoroughly. Once it's mixed, I take a piece of paper we'll be printing with, and I dab out a small amount onto the sheet to see how the color will appear. I compare this ink dab to the swatch book to make sure that it matches. I'll do this for each of the five colors we're printing today. Now that our inks are mixed, the plate is mounted, our press is set up, and our paper is cut down, we're ready to start the first color. I'm just going to put another form roller in place and start inking up. For short runs like these, we don't set up the entire ink well on the press, we're just going to use a few of the rollers. I'll let the rollers down over the ink cylinder to carry ink to the plate and feed my first sheet through the press. Since this is the first color of five, it's most important that this plate is perfectly straight. Since it isn't, I'm going to adjust the paper guides on one side to straighten out the positioning of the print. Next, I'll feed another sheet through the press and check again to make sure the print is straightened out. Perfect. Oh yeah. The impression also looks good. I'll also double check the color on the press against the Pantone swatch. Okay, so we're good to go. Once we've run all the sheets through the press, I do a final check and then clean the ink off the press and prepare for the second color to start. The 
it's important to get all the ink off the press so our next color isn't altered by any leftover ink. Here's the printing plate for the second color. I've marked the positioning for the plate on the grid of the base and I'm carefully positioning the plate in the exact position of the first plate as best I can. I place the chase into the press and start inking up with the second color. We always run our colors from the lightest to the darkest tone. Here I'm marking the lead edge of the sheet so the stack always goes back in the press the same way. We're all inked up, so let's see how close the positioning of the second plate is to the first. As you can see here, our crop marks are pretty far off. We'll have to make an adjustment to the guides, which will move the position of the paper until our crop marks match perfectly. I'll run another sheet through the press and have a look. Okay, much better. I also like to take a look at our overall impression into the paper, which is nice and even. And the second color is ready to go. Now that the second color is finished, we'll wash this ink off and prepare the third color. Once again, I'm positioning the third plate as closely into place as the last two. Placing the chase into the press, and inking up our third color. Once the ink has warmed up and spread evenly, I'll run a single sheet through and have a look at where our plate lands. On this third color, I actually got lucky, and the plate was placed very, very close to landing in the right spot. You can see all four crop marks landed, and the way the colors butt up to each other is pretty much perfect. Compare the Pantone again to make sure it's perfect, and then we're ready to run. There's a handful of things I'm not really talking about in this video, such as make ready, roller height, or troubleshooting problems on the press. And this is a fairly simplified version of what goes on when we're printing with letterpress.
One simple technique we use is to run the crop marks off one edge of the sheet so they can be splayed out and any movement or misregistered sheets would be obvious. Okay, so our third color is finished and it's time to wash up our press. Once again, we're placing the next plate for our fourth color in position on the base, being careful to make sure it's as perfectly straight as possible. Lock the chase into place on the press and ink up our rollers and cylinder. Here I am placing the printed sheets back into the press, running ink over the plate and feeding the first sheet through to see how it looks. I can immediately see that this printing plate is off by quite a bit. You can tell by the crop marks and by the artwork itself. Everything seems to be shifted off from where it should be landing. I'll make a few adjustments to the guides until the artwork and the crop marks all line up. You can see here, everything is now lined up perfectly, our colors are trapping as they should be, and landing exactly as they should be. So we're ready to run these sheets through for the fourth time. Once they've finished, we can go ahead and clean up the ink on our press. So we've just finished the fourth color out of our five colors for our letterpress print. And as you can see, there's a ton of work that goes into the letterpress process. One of the most integral steps that we do is making sure that we mix our inks perfectly and we match our colors exactly to a Pantone swatch guide. It's an essential tool for designers and creatives out there that are looking to create consistent colors that match their brand or their brand identity. So it's super important to have one of these. So since it is so important, we figured it would be a great idea to give away one of the brand new Pantone swatch books from our friends at Pantone. It's a set of uncoded and coded swatch books to help you do the work that you do. So all you have to do to enter is leave a comment below in the comment section and let us know what your favorite Pantone color is. This is just our way of saying thank you to our viewers and giving a one lucky designer a tool that they need to do the work they do. So just leave a comment in the section below 
Tell us what your favorite Pantone color is and you'll be entered to win. All right, let's see what this fifth color is gonna look like. Okay, so for the last plate, we're once again trying our best to mount the plate as perfectly in position as possible. Locking the tape into the press and inking up the rollers and cylinder with our last color of ink. We have our sheets back in the press and I'll feed one sheet through to have a look at our positioning. Again, the paper will need a bit of adjustment to both the lower guides and the side guides in order to land our registration perfectly. You can see just how off this printing plate is by looking at different elements in the artwork. When a tiny adjustment needs to be made, I'll build up a small piece of tape on the guides or make a micro adjustment just as needed. Now that we've dialed in the registration, you can clearly see how each of the five colors are sitting perfectly where they need to and all the artwork elements line up exactly. One way to tell that our registration is perfect is to take another look at the crop marks that we run off the edge of the sheet. Over at the paper cutter, we'll trim this down to final size. And there you have it, a perfectly registered five color business card design printed using letterpress on a thick 40 point cotton paper stock. Thank you for watching along through the making of this print and please leave a comment if you have any questions about our process. If you're interested in seeing more videos like this, please subscribe because we have so many more behind the scenes videos on the way. Thanks again for watching.